can do it. Even Toyota admit that over a third of existing Land Cruiser owners hardly ever drive off-road, and I reckon the figure would be significantly higher if we adjusted it to take account of their definition of off-road. That's not to say it isn't a capable off-roader. It is extremely. African plains, desert crossings, ice treks, expeditions of all sorts, no problem. It just happens that it's extremely good at taking the kids to school, all of them, and all of their friends. Toyota first brought the Land Cruiser over here in 1975 and now four-wheel drive models account for nearly 15% of their car sales in the UK. The Land Cruiser has earned that crucial factor in any car, image, pose value, cachet. This latest edition is the biggest bruiser of all, it sits at the top of the Land Cruiser range and is very handy for frightening lorry drivers. With a name like Amazon, you know it's going to be big. But it's getting to grips with just how big that really boggles the mind. <laughs> these wheels look like they've been nicked off quarry trucks. The headlamps come off a cross-channel ferry, and these side steps are actually made from broken up bits of oil rig. But that's unfair, it makes it sound crude and clumsy. Which it isn't. Remarkably, all three and a half tons of it can lope along quite nicely, thank you. And that's helped by the choice of two engines. Not surprisingly, there's a V8 petrol. In this case, it's a 4.6 litre, 230 brake, with about 430 odd newton metres of torque available. And then, there's this. It's a 4.2 litre, straight six, 24 valve, intercooled turbo diesel. Yummy. But please, just because it's diesel, don't think wheezy old taxi or cheesy old oil burner. Think big beefy truck. Think, oh, don't think at all. Just listen. Because this thing sounds gorgeous. Oh, God. I like a diesel. Once you've overcome the thing's initial hesitation to move at all, and it's not surprising it does because it's a bit like pulling away in a bungalow really, it actually lopes along quite nicely. Sure, it's very big and very heavy, but it's also very powerful, loaded with technology to make it all a bit easier, and undeniably very comfortable. The automatic gearbox is standard on the petrol and available as an option on the diesel. It comes with two modes that it automatically selects between depending upon your driving style at the time. And it also has various technical gizmos to make sure it dips the power in between changes, uh, which is a good idea because it's going to stop it to throwing the powertrain into orbit with all that torque. With the diesel engine, 0 to 60 comes up in a pretty respectable 13.7 seconds, and in the V8, an unbelievable 10.7 seconds. But not surprisingly, and as always, there is a price. Do anything other than tickle the V8 petrol lightly under the chin, and you're going to need an oil tanker following for air-to-air -air refuels. The diesel at least tries and manages to keep it above 20 mpg, which, for a vehicle of this size, isn't going to be too bad. And as a driving experience, well, the steering isn't anything like as woolly and remote as you would expect. It actually feels quite precise. The brakes are hefty to say the least. They're also equipped with a hydraulic booster, which makes a pretty creditable job of bringing the whole thing to a halt in something less than it would take an oil tanker, certainly. All in all, for what is probably the biggest 4 before you can find, it's pretty nice to drive. The Land Cruiser's always been aimed at the luxury car sector, and this latest flagship is a blatant attempt to wrestle Johnny Jag and Boris Beamer from their Executive Express, and it has a price tag to match. Around £44,000 will be required, thank you sir and madam, if you want one of these, the top spec VX. Or you could go down market and settle for the GX at £36,790. That's a lot of money to pay for a 4 before and a lot of money to pay for a car that doesn't have a luxury badge. But it does come with all the goodies. Air conditioning, electric seats, electric everything in fact. CD player, leather trim, the works. My only complaint is the dash, which to my mind isn't that of a £40,000 car. It's decidedly basic in its layout, but still probably superior to much of the competition in the off-road market. Should you decide you do want to take to the rough in over 40 grand's worth of car, there's no doubt in the abilities of the Amazon. All that talk will get you out of as well as into trouble, and these things do have a reputation for being very capable off-road. 
The days when a cloth cap sturdy well is in a canvas roof with a pinnacle of off-roading sophistication are long gone, and the new generation of four-wheel drives uses very modern technology to leave certain antiquated products built in this country trailing miserably behind in the mud. High and low ratios are fitted, of course, with both automatic and manual gearboxes, and centre and rear diff locks are all standard. The MPV market has for some time been fighting to pull the rug from under the knobbly tyres of the 4x4s. Why, they say, have all that macho butch metalwork when you can have an MPV? Why? Well, for a start, this doesn't look like a van. And in this, if you decide you need to go off-road, you can. And another reason, this is huge. And not only do all seven passengers benefit from headrests and seat belts, but here's the good news, with all of them on board, there's still room for the luggage. Do that in an MPV.